Hello everyone. In the previous video, I talked about some basics of state space control and the observability and controllability. So here, let's talk about the controller design. And here we are talking about regularization, which is basically, you might also call it the set point control. So the value of the desired output or the reference input is going to be a constant number. Okay, so uh, I really want my output to settle at this fixed value, whether under damped or over damped or something. And I don't want it to follow a time variable, time varying function. So that is uh, what we're going to discuss. And uh, as I told you in the um, state space, the design of controller for a system, whether it's SISO or MIMO, is very easy, especially when you have more inputs and more outputs. So if the system is MIMO, then this method we're going to see called pole placement is basically a uh, simple and very effective method for design of controller. So what is it? Let's assume that the uh, dynamics of the system is given by these two sets of equations that we know, the uh, dynamics equations or the state equations and the output equation. And here, the control that we pick for u is very simple. We just say u is equal to negative sum gain matrix k, which we call it the state feedback gain matrix times the vector of all state variables, x. And this method of control, which looks like kind of like a proportional control, really, we call it full state feedback. Why do we call it full state feedback? Because we're going to use each and every one of the state variables in this uh, control signal. So I'm going to use all of them. And so the assumption here is what? First, the system is controllable. So this matrix here has to be full rank. Two, all of the state variables are accessible, measurable, and I can have them for my feedback. If some of the state variables are not physically measurable, then we have to estimate them. That is a separate topic we're going to see in a future lecture called observers. And we can combine observers then with controllers, okay? And as I said, the system has to be controllable. So let's say the system is controllable, and let's say for now I can measure all of the state variables. Good. So the question is, what is this matrix K? What kind of matrix would I use to make sure that the system is stable? And not only stable, the uh, response of the system to a, a desired um, fixed input signal, right, the regularization problem, is done the way I want. I mean, like, the speed of the response, which is defined in terms of, like, settling time, rise time, and so on, the amount of overshoot and everything, whether I can control those. So, if I plug in this U back into my state equation, so this term becomes negative B uh, times K times X, and I can combine both of them because they both have X, so your dynamics equation becomes like that. X dot equals A minus BK times X. And so the solution of that is X of T equals exponential of A minus BK T times X at zero. And clearly, if the eigenvalues of this new matrix, this new state matrix or system matrix, if the eigenvalues of that all have negative real parts, clearly that means all of these exponentials will asymptotically go to zero. Therefore, the final solution of x of t will converge to what? It will converge to zero as time goes to what? To infinity. Which means the system is, of course, stable. Now, uh, that is good. The system is stable. There is one thing missing about it, and we'll talk about it, and that is... What if I don't want my variables all to go to zero? What if I want some of them to settle at a number other than zero? Right? Because in this case, all of them will go to zero. And that is the next topic that we're going to see, which is servo design with pole placement. So the first thing right now we want to decide is how we choose 
k such that the eigenvalues of this matrix A minus B k are at specific locations that we want or at the desired locations that we want. So that's the first thing we need to do. And as I said, the first thing is this matrix here, this B, A, B all the way to N minus A, B, this guy has to be full rank. If it's full rank, then it has inverse. And that's where you see here the inverse of that matrix is used in this formula that I'm going to explain in a second. But um, in order to find the matrix K from this formula that we call the Ackerman formula, the first condition that we need is this matrix here, this augmented matrix is uh, full rank so we can invert it. Okay? Now, here, uh, as I said, the goal is to put the poles of the system or the eigenvalues of this matrix at the desired what? At the desired location. So here, in this formula, as I said, which is called Ackerman, and you can use it to determine K. That's one way to determine K. Here, we need the inverse of this controllability matrix. We need this vector, which has all zeros and one one, and the dimension is, of course, uh, one by N, where N is the order of the system. And you also have this function phi of A. What is phi of A? Well, phi or phi of X in general, or phi of S, is called the characteristic polynomial of A, okay? Uh, here, let me change it to phi of S instead of phi of A, because then we'll talk about it. Uh, phi of A means instead of uh, S, you replace it with A. So you, have, you basically plug the matrix into its own, um, into the new desired characteristic polynomial. So this phi of s, as I said, is the characteristic polynomial, the polynomial for which the roots are the poles of the system, in the desired system. So here, basically, if I look at an example that we had last time, this here is the characteristic polynomial, right? If you set it equal to zero, then guess what? Then uh, the roots are going to be called poles, and those poles are the same as the eigenvalues of the A matrix, and they determine the stability, right? So this is phi of S for the original system. Now, this phi that you see is the same thing, but not for the original system. This is with the desired system. So this is the characteristic polynomial of the new A, okay, which is really A minus B, K. Good. So with the new poles that are given to us, or we determine them based on the response characteristics of the system, we find this phi of s, right? This phi of s, if the poles are uh, at locations p1, p2, and so on, this is going to be like s minus p1, correct? Times s minus p2, times s minus all the way to uh, S minus PN, where the P's are the new poles or the desired poles of the system, okay? Now, um, here, I plug A matrix into that phi, into the new, the phi of the new system, not the phi of the old system, because the old system that is this system, the system without control, here, when I say new and old, I mean the system without control and the control system. So if I plug the A into the characteristic polynomial of the original system, the system without control, so here, if instead of this A, I, S, I plug in A, the result is also going to be zero matrix, zero n by n. And that is a theorem in linear algebra, say, any matrix, if you plug it into its own characteristic equation, it will uh, basically work. In other words, the result on the right-hand side is going to be zero. And I don't want a zero here to be multiplied by everything because the result is, of course, going to be all zeros. 
So this phi is phi of the new system, not or the control system. In that one, if instead of S, everywhere I plug in A, the result is not going to be a zero by zero, a, a bunch of zeros, right? It's not going to be like this. And so when I plug it here, the result of K is not going to be all zeros. So this is called the Ackerman formula. And this is an explicit formula for determining the gain matrix. There are other ways to do it. One way is to plug the K parametrically in here. So for example, let's say if this system is this system here, right? Uh, you have three states. Then this K is going to be a vector, a, a row vector with three unknowns, like K1, K2, and what? K3. And then form this A minus BK in terms of these parameters. Then what? then find the uh, characteristic polynomial of that, which is basically determinant of SI minus the matrix equals zero, right? And then um, set that without that zero, set this equivalent to what? Equivalent to that S minus P1 times S minus P2 all the way to s minus pn right and this is a minus bk since these p's are all given and a is given and b is given if you look at the two sides you're going to get three equations and three unknowns based on the uh, orders of the uh, s terms in the polynomials like cubic s square uh, the quadratic s and constant or the um, a linear term, and you get enough equations to find all of these case. So this way is more time consuming, and you can do that, right? To find enough equations and enough unknowns. So that way K is like implicitly given and you have to find it. But this Ackerman formula, the good thing about it is you directly plug in here, there is no equation, and you directly plug the numbers and you directly find K. And also, if you want to use MATLAB, MATLAB has a command called place for pole placement, where you pass it A and B, and P here is the vector of all of those poles. So it has like P1, P2, P3, and all the way to Pn. And that will give you the K matrix just with this formula. So it calculates it for you. And when you use that K, clearly... If you plug it back into the system, the system will be stable and all of your x's, as I said, should converge to zero, right? So let's uh, do an example on this. And then in the next video, I'll show you if you don't want all of these x values to converge to zero and you want some of them maybe to converge to a constant value instead of zero, that is non-zero, so basically you are designing like a simple servo, then how should you change this control law from simply u equal negative kx? All you need is to add some extra terms to make sure that some of the uh, state variables or the output variables do not all go to zero. But right now the goal is to solve an example here. So here we have this matrix A, we have that B, and these are the desired poles. So let's go ahead and use MATLAB and uh, solve this together. Okay, so here is the matrix A, here is B, and here is the vector of what desired poles per this problem, and we want to determine K, right? So if we want to determine K, so we say K is equal to place of A and B and P, and it gives you the k that you need 199 55 and 8 so let's go ahead and write it down so in this problem k is 199 55 8 and that should make the new system with the new matrix with the new a matrix which is a minus bk to have these 
um, desired poles and we can check that well if I run the eigenvalues on the a matrix of the uncontrolled system you see that it has three stable poles but some of these poles are very close to the imaginary axis which makes long oscillations uh, which makes sorry um, uh, long decays basically so the decays will take some good time but now if I run it on a minus b times k look you see exactly you get the poles that you wanted negative 2 plus minus 4j and negative 10 and since these guys have big negative bigger negative real parts so the response of this system is going to be what much faster and if you want to see how the system behaves under a specific initial condition you can use the command initial you might say why don't you use the command step on this new system well i cannot use the command step anymore because guess what i used all of my u and i got my u directly from x so i don't have any other u here to pass to the system my u the input the control input is basically just negative k times x i got it directly from the feedback of the state variables and from no external output okay as i said we're gonna see that in another video so if i have a specific r of t like a step function or anything and i need to bring that into the system and i need these values to not settle at zero that is the topic of the next video okay servo design system using pole placement so right now all i can do is to give the system some non-zero initial conditions and see if the system behaves according to these three poles so i need the command initial i need to form a system and i need to pass x naught to it and that should do the job for me right so all i need is basically something like that so let's go ahead and apply it so i form a system using the ss command and now mm, it's gonna be a minus b times k right and uh b and c and d what happened oh i forgot to have a c and d i need a c and d okay so let's say the output is the first variable so it's like this and d is simply zero so that's my state 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 variable and then i have x naught and let's say x naught is uh three and two and four something like that so now i say initial of sys and x naught let's see if it gives me the plot there we go and this is the output of the system which is x1 and clearly you see it goes from 3 it has some oscillation but it is going to settle at 0 right here it just goes to 3 seconds if you want you can pass some t final maybe go to 10 seconds instead and that should simulate it for 10 seconds you see clearly it's settling at 0 and there is oscillation and the oscillation is because of these two complex poles okay so clearly you see that the system is acting as expected. So we're going to finish this lecture here. And in the next one, I'll talk about how to add an extra term to the control so I can have some non-zero reference signal. And we're going to see it for different conditions of the system, whether your system has integrator on it or it doesn't. So thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in the next lecture.